So Google's latest AI ambition is a system designed to simulate the entire physical world. It's real and it's happening right now at Google DeepMind. We'll talk about what this means, why Google thinks it's the critical path to artificial general intelligence, and how it ties into Google's broader AI strategy, including their rumored Gemini 2.0 update. We'll also look at some big announcements about Google making AI more accessible in workspace, plus how this all fits into the wider AI race, especially with Microsoft. All tight. So first things first, Tim Brooks, who was previously at OpenAI, left that company last fall and moved over to Google DeepMind. He's now heading up this new team dedicated to world simulation. Basically, they want to build an AI model that can understand and replicate the physics of our planet. That's a pretty ambitious leap. If you're wondering what world simulation means, it's essentially about training an AI system on massive streams of multimodal data, video, audio, maybe sensors from robotics, you name it, so that the AI can anticipate what's going to happen in a given environment, just like how we as humans rely on our knowledge of physical laws to navigate our daily lives. The ultimate dream is that these systems could become so advanced they'd essentially pave the way to AGI. According to Brooks, they're not messing around with the scale of this thing. They're working closely with other Google AI projects, Gemini, VO, and Genie. Now, Gemini has already been in the spotlight for a while. It's that big next generation large language model from Google. VO is a video generation tool, and Genie is a foundation model that can create playable 3D worlds from a single image. If you combine these kinds of technologies, massive language models, advanced video generation, and the ability to produce entire 3D environments, you can see how the puzzle pieces start to fit together for an AI that can think in terms of real world physics. This all ties in with Google's continued faith in the so-called scaling hypothesis, which basically says if we keep throwing more data and more parameters at AI models, we'll continue to see big leaps in intelligence. Critics though are saying that we might be reaching the upper limit of what pure scaling can do, data is finite, and the environmental impact of training huge models is pretty high. Some experts argue we need new architectures, not just bigger ones. But for now, Google is doubling down. The job ads for this new world simulation team explicitly say they see scaling up to video and multimodal data as crucial for reaching AGI. They're also looking for a research engineer world modeling at their Mountain View HQ, highlighting that they want to push world simulators to the very limit of available computing power. Now, why do we even need to simulate the entire real world? Well, there are a bunch of reasons. First off, if you can simulate real physics accurately, you can train robots in a virtual environment, which is infinitely safer and cheaper than messing up in real life. Imagine a robot that needs to learn how to walk. Instead of physically stumbling around, it can practice in a simulated environment until it's good enough to walk on real floors. On top of that, developers in video games and interactive entertainment could embed these super advanced physics sims to create game worlds that feel unbelievably real. Just imagine playing a game where objects and environments behave with near perfect realism, all powered by an AI that's learned the laws of physics. But it's not just gaming and robotics. Researchers could tap into these advanced simulators for scientific experiments, like simulating weather patterns or even modeling how viruses spread in a population without physically experimenting in the real world. And crucially, these systems could help with real-time interactive conversation scenarios where an AI has to understand the context, environment, and even body language within a space. It really starts to feel like something from a futuristic sci-fi movie. Speaking of near future developments, rumors are swirling that Google is about to drop a major update to its Gemini model called Gemini 2.0 Flash Thinking Expanse 123 and that it's set to launch on January 23, 25. This little tidbit apparently leaked during a Google Hackathon live stream where a guy named Pan Weifeng caught some details. The name flash thinking implies faster or more dynamic reasoning, which might help with quick decision making in tasks like real-time simulation. If that's the case, it ties nicely into the new world modeling mission. Maybe Google's plan is to integrate these flash thinking capabilities into their AI studio platform, giving developers an easy interface for building advanced simulations or immersive experiences. Now, let's circle back to that job advertisement that Google posted. Research engineer, world modeling. 
If you dig into it, the focus is on building infrastructure for giant generative models of the physical world. The role emphasizes solving the hardest problems with scale, training these simulators at a massive level, building metrics for what they call physical intelligence, working with real-time interactive generation, and figuring out how to integrate it all with multimodal language models. This is a huge challenge because you're not just analyzing text or images, you're basically building a dynamic 4D time plus 3D map of reality. And the ad also references the so-called bitter lesson, a concept in AI that basically says simpler methods that scale well often outperform more intricate, hand-engineered solutions. This means they might keep the architecture as clean and straightforward as possible so they can keep pushing that scaling approach without complicated bottlenecks. But here's another major piece of the puzzle. Google is also shaking up its enterprise strategy by making AI features free for all workspace subscribers. Previously, you had to shell out an extra $20 per user per month to access Gemini Business. Now, Google has rolled that cost into the regular workspace subscription, which has gone up from $12 to $14 per user. So effectively, for just two extra dollars, businesses get all these AI goodies, like auto-generated spreadsheet designs, meeting summaries, an AI-powered note taker, video editing, and more without the old paywall. Meanwhile, Microsoft is also in this race, launching a free version of its Copilot chat for Microsoft 365 with an option for pay-as-you-go agents. Microsoft still offers its higher-end $30 per user per month solution for those who want the full premium capabilities. But the fact that both Google and Microsoft are making AI more accessible in the same week says a lot about the current AI arms race. Each company is trying to get as many users as possible on board with their AI ecosystem. The strategy seems to be, if everyone's using your AI, you build brand loyalty, gather more user data, which can further refine your model, and basically stay ahead in the race to deliver next level AI. Google's president of cloud applications, Jerry Dishler, talked about how the main obstacle for businesses adopting AI has been cost. By dropping the extra fees and just raising the base workspace subscription a little, Google is basically saying, hey, we want you to see the value of AI right away without that big financial barrier. From Google's perspective, bundling AI features into the existing suite might reduce friction, get more people to try it, and help them realize how powerful these tools can be. Of course, there could be trade-offs like heavier resource usage or users who don't need AI feeling like they're subsidizing those who do, but from a bigger picture standpoint, it's a bold move to accelerate AI adoption. Now, how does opening AI to more users lead to something as ambitious as a world model? Simple, more users mean more data and more feedback loops giving AI deeper insights into how people actually work, whether that's writing emails or crunching data. Combine that with massive video libraries, advanced 3D modeling from tools like Genie, and real-time robotics data, and suddenly you have AI that doesn't just parse text, it predicts how objects should behave in a simulated environment. Of course, building a true world model brings tough challenges. Physical laws are complex, the data is huge, and ethical concerns can't be ignored. Tim Brooks at Google DeepMind emphasizes cross-disciplinary teamwork for that very reason. Meanwhile, rumors about Google's Gemini 2.0 flash thinking expanse Explore 123 hint at a big leap forward, especially as the AI race with Microsoft heats up in 2025. So are we inching toward a future where AIs genuinely understand the physical world or is it all just hype? Let me know your thoughts and hey, if you're into this kind of deep dive, don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more AI updates.